Hey, how's it going everyone? I'm here to remind all of you that this is a history-based channel, not a tier list channel. So, I've got 10 weird facts about historical figures for all of you. I promise you that if nothing else, you will learn at least one thing from this video. And if you comment that you knew all of these, remember, you are a huge nerd, like me. So, let's rock and roll. Number one, beloved children's author Hans Christian Andersen was afraid of one thing more than anything else. That is, premature burial. In the 1800s and before, the likelihood of being buried alive was fairly high because of the lack of medical understanding at the time. So, if you were knocked out for an extended period of time, with a slow heart rate, you would be buried and then wake up in the coffin. This was such an issue that people could request to have a string tied to their hand when they died that led to a bell above their grave, and in the event that they woke up, they could ring it to alert the gravekeeper who could come rescue them. This is where the phrase dead ringer comes from, which you probably already did know, but what you didn't know is that Hans wasn't having any of this, and simply requested that if he was presumed dead that his corpse have its throat slashed so that there would be no possible way of him waking up in a casket. Number two, I'm going to be retreading some of the ground I've done before, but it's a story that I love so much that I'm just going to retell it anyway. So let's immediately get demonetized by retelling my favorite story of Angra Mainyu. Angra is a key figure in the religion of Zoroastrianism, akin to the devil in Christianity. At one point, he was captured and enslaved by a king who rode him like a horse to the ends of the earth every single day. Clearly not wanting to be in this situation, Angra devised a plan, and when he reached a certain part of the path, he managed to buck off the king who had vertigo and then swallowed him whole. The king's brother wanted him back and asked a sage for advice on how to get the body back. He explained explained that Angra loved two things in life, music and anal sex, so the brother tracked down Angra and serenaded him. The two made a deal that the brother would plow his mound if he could get the corpse of his brother back afterwards. So Angra positioned himself and the brother literally stuck his arm up the brown eye of all evil and pulled out his brother's corpse, then made a break for it. This cursed his arm with what is essentially leprosy that was only later cured by an ox urinating on it and then cow piss is now a sacred relic in Zoroastrianism. Go watch my Angra video for more details. Number three, Blackbeard is the most famous pirate in history, but how exactly did he die? Well, essentially he was outsmarted, which was a hell of a feat because despite what you may have thought, Blackbeard was one of the best tacticians of his time. He was smart enough to know when to take a fight and how to always win it. He knew how to appear imposing and made himself out to be the most violent, fearsome pirate in history, while realistically bluffing the whole time for the most part. Because, oh lord, he could fight. But he was on a military trained admiral, which is bad when you're fighting military trained admirals. He was hunted down by Lieutenant Robert Maynard during a time in which more than half of Blackbeard's crew was ashore getting supplies. And after all the cannons had been fired and the hand-to-hand -hand combat had begun, it is said that Blackbeard was slashed with a sword more than 20 times and shot at least 5 different times and still did not stop his assault. He did all of this while also having his classic slow-burning wicks in his beard to give off the appearance of a demon. With his sustained injuries and no sign of slowing down, many believed him to actually be a demon, especially when you consider that one of these sword slashes was right to his throat and he still kept going. And and he still nearly killed Lieutenant Maynard. However, he was finally put down the same way that Rasputin was, with a shot directly to the brain as he raised his sword to kill the lieutenant. For those of you who have ever wondered why Blackbeard has a gut skill and fate, this is why. Number four is brought to you by Generic Passenger in my Discord. Napoleon Bonaparte lost to a bunch of rabbits. This sounds absolutely ridiculous, but remember that Australia once lost to emus. So, here's what happened. In July of 1807, Napoleon wanted to celebrate the signing of a treaty that ended the war between the French Empire and Imperial Russia. So he and his commanders decided on a rabbit hunt and asked his chief of staff to arrange it. So he invited a bunch of top officials to and procured what some say is about 3,000 rabbits. The actual number is unknown, so I'm sticking with the three cakes as the most consistent. They placed the rabbits in cages around a field and then when given the signal, released them. Now, at this point, Napoleon and his top officials were out on the prowl for rabbits. Here's the issue. The chief of staff had gotten domesticated rabbits, not wild caught ones. So, they were familiar with people and as such, ran right towards the group of hunters. At first, the group thought it was just kind of odd and laughed it off. That is until they literally swarmed the emperor and climbing up onto his legs and wouldn't back off even after being shot at. So, the emperor and his cohorts panicked and rushed to their carriage to escape. In response, according to a report, the rabbits split into a two-pronged formation and attempted to swarm the carriage, and were only finally driven off after the carriage itself drove off. Get bodied, you short king. Number five is what happens after you spurn Artemis. So, the great sprinter and huntress Atalanta, former Argonaut and hero of the Caledonian boar hunt, was a devout follower of the goddess of the moon, Artemis. But if you knew Greek myth, you already knew that. Here is what you didn't know. Atalanta was challenged to a foot race by a man named Hippomenes, who wished to marry her and by winning the race would win the right to do so. He knew that she would outrun him easily, so he asked the goddess of love, Aphrodite, for help. She gave him golden apples that would distract the hunters if he threw them down on the ground. The plan worked and Hippomenes won the race and took Atalante as his bride. However, he neglected to thank Aphrodite for the apples and in retaliation made the pair so horny that they had a mid-hunt shag fest in the Temple of Zeus. Now, if you're a follower of Artemis, sex is a big no-no. And upon learning this, she punished both of them by turning them into lions. 
Now, you may be asking yourself, well, they can just continue their business then, right? Wrong. The ancient Greeks believed that lions could not mate with other lions, but instead only with leopards. Thus, they could no longer shag each other. Even if they were to do so, lions last like 5 to 10 seconds, so there would be no pleasure in the act. I will not be elaborating on why I know that, but that is why Atalante appears as a cat girl in Fate. Number 6, we're going to talk about Maeve. So, she is from the Ulster Cycle, which is the most famous ancient Irish story. In the most gentle terms possible, the meth head outside my marathon station wrote all of this before overdosing. Most people are aware that Maeve was killed by having a piece of cheese slammed against her head via slingshot, but do you know what started the whole debacle? Maeve demanded that she have equal wealth to her husband, but discovered that he had one bull more than she did. So she learned of a bull that rivaled her husband's own, named Don Kulink, which I'm not pronouncing correctly because I don't speak ancient Irish which was a bull that was incredibly fertile. It was a holy fucking cow, to say the least. She tried on multiple occasions to get the bull from Der Macfiash, including sex with her, but was rejected. Then, a drunk messenger told him that if they didn't give it up, they'd just take the boned-up bovine by force. So, they went to war instead. On the side against Maeve was Kuhlin, who managed to hold off the invasion single-handedly. Ku managed to keep most heroes away, but Maeve did manage to snag the bull eventually. Now, I was raised as a farmer, what do you think happens when you put two incredibly horny bulls together? They kill each other, which is exactly what happened. So, in short, one of the bloodiest battles in Ulster that led to the deaths of many heroes is because Maeve wanted a sex cow absolutely legendary. Here's the bit that I did not know, and this is brought to you by Fluffelsnuffleupagus in the Discord. She had many fights with Koo herself, but I really don't care about those right now. During the final fight of the cattle raid of Coolidge, she went off to go take a piss somewhere that was so powerful it created a river that still exists today. I'm serious. It's called Fwalameva, which translates to Maeve's Water. Number 7 is brought to you by Wubius Art on Twitter. Nikola Tesla was one of history's greatest weirdos. He was a genius and rival to the revolutionary mind of Thomas Edison. One of the weird things about Tesla is that he never married and supposedly died a virgin, but that's not really interesting. What is interesting is that he loved pigeons. Like, really loved pigeons. Which is incredibly unusual when you consider the fact that Tesla was an insane germaphobe. Like, if you've seen the meme about the ducks in the park being free and that you could just take them home with you, Tesla actually did that with pigeons that he fed in the park. He once had a chef at a hotel make a meal of seeds for a pigeon that came to his room. But the weirdest of all is that he supposedly married one. Not legally, mind you, but we'll get to that. He openly admitted to falling in love with a pure white pigeon, loving it the same way a man loved a woman, and declared that the bird itself loved him back. He then declared that as long as he had her, his life had purpose. Then in 1922, the bird flew into his room and died, and at the moment of its death, he claims a dazzling white light appeared that outshone anything that either AC or DC electricity could produce. He then believed his life's works were finished. Dude was a genius and an absolute nutcase. Number 8 is brought to us by Ace Monogi in the Discord. The tales of Beowulf are the first story written in the English language. However, we have lost 9 fifteenths of the original text, which means that we are missing key parts to the legend of the Old Dane King. Now, you would think that this is something that's worth preserving, right? It's a historical artifact. Well, so how did this happen? Well, the original texts were kept in such poor conditions that it destroyed parts of the text itself, so what we have now is limited to those tales. That said, it's still a great story and you should go read it. Number 9 is brought to us by Kriv in the Discord. So, most people know Ivan the Terrible. He is probably the most famous emperor of Russia, hands down. As the name suggests, he was a pretty brutal ruler. However, he was incredibly religious, and even though he would put people to death, he would always make sure to pray for their souls. However, these souls may not have been resting in peace, and instead manifested in a curse. There is a painting by Ilya Repen called Ivan the Terrible and his son, Ivan. It is an extremely controversial piece for various reasons and has been vandalized twice as recently as 2018. I'm not going to get into why this is such a controversial piece, but it is a masterpiece of work when you look at it. You can see the extreme levels of emotion that are on display simply at a glance. But perhaps the artist himself was possessed by something greater when creating this. A quote by him goes as follows. I was working on it as if I was charmed. Sometimes I got scared and turned away from the painting and hid it. Something made me uneasy, and yet something still made me come back and continue painting it. At times I got goosebumps, and then the fear just kind of faded. There were two models for this painting, Vezevalad Garshin and Grigory Masoyadov, being the son of Ivan and Ivan himself, respectively. Garshin supposedly went mad after the creation of the painting and killed himself. He claimed he was being chased by a glass ball everywhere that he went, and to escape it, jumped off a staircase. Now, later studies show that he had extreme mental health issues, which probably is what caused it, 
but there's a belief that the painting itself was responsible and thus it was dubbed as cursed. Supposedly, when the painting was first presented, people fainted at the sight of it. The official account is that the room went silent with either horror, awe, or fascination. This has less to do with Ivan himself, but is fascinating nonetheless, so here's a bonus one. After a series of unsuccessful wars and betrayals by his own people, he was pretty much abandoned, so he went completely paranoid and insane. During this, his hair supposedly turned bleach white, and he became a horrific ruler creating the Oprichnik, which was a brutal secret police. Now, the validity of his hair turning full white is up to debate, because very few physical descriptions of him exist, so take that as you will. Number 10 is not about a historical figure because I'm a filthy liar, but it's adorable and short, so I'm telling it anyway. The Voyager probe is currently in deep space approximately 14.5 billion miles away, but it is still sending information back to NASA. The poor little guy, however, seems to be a bit confused as to where he is right now. He has been sending weird jumbled up data back to Earth. The cause of this is unknown and it has not triggered the probe's safe mode, so one can only imagine that the little guy is just a tad lost at the moment and is trying to check up on home. There are even some people who are speculating that aliens are tampering with it to send weird information back to Earth. However, this is all speculation and I'm just going to leave our good lad as being a little bit lost. But there you go, 10 weird history facts. Thanks for watching, share this with your history teachers to scare them, follow my Twitch, join the Discord and sub if you are so inclined. I'm going to go stare at this Ivan painting for about 13 more hours. Peace out.